You guys look good this morning. Can I get the lights back on? Okay. No, seriously. Look. Stand up again. Stand up again. Let me see you. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to start with group participation, because I know, I know love, lesbians love this. All right, I want you to sit if this is your first summit. Sit. All right, first timers. You, gotta, you always got to have your first. You always have your first. Look to your friends that are still standing. These are your people for the day. All right. I want you to stand if this is your, or sit if this is your second summit. All right, this is, this is where the loyalty really comes through. <laughs> this is where I get to see. All right, I want you to sit. What a little fist bump, I like that over there. Yeah. I want you to sit if this is your third summit. Ooh, competition's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. All right. If this is your fourth or fifth summit, I want you to sit. Fourth or fifth. Whew. Let's get a round of applause for everyone here. No, 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 stay standing. There's a, there's got, <clears throat> this is a, a lesbian conference. There's got to be a winner, <laughs> right? All right, if you're nine or more, I want you to stay standing. Erica, me over here. Well, you guys are the tie winners. Another round of applause over here. So I'm Leanne Pittsford, your founder and CEO of Lesbian Zoo Tech. I have literally the best job in the world. Um, and we start every event that we do, even if it's three people, with a high five. So turn to your neighbor, give them the high five, warm up, get to know them. We will do this all day, all damn day, high fives, I promise. I literally walked down the street in San Francisco. All right, overachievers, overachievers. I see you, I see you, it feels good. I've literally walked down the street in multiple cities and people have been like, Leanne, high five. I'm like, ugh. That's how I really know this is working. So I started Let's Meet You Tech a little over four years ago because I went, I started a tech company and I'd go to a lot of events and they'd look like this. We all know this. Um, and I'd go to a lot of LGBTQ events and shocker, they looked a lot like this. <laughs> and so I started to wonder, do lesbians in tech actually exist? I really, I actually didn't think there were more than a couple, a few of my friends, um, but I really didn't think that they exist because everywhere I looked, right, you go to the, every gay area in every city across the world, it's all gay men. Every LGBTQ event, it's gay men, right? Investors, you're like, where are the women? Probably at home watching Scandal, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, and if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Men make more than women, so you put two men together and two women, and we're actually at the opposite ends of the economic spe spectrum. And I learned this lesson um, really intensely. I worked for Quality California. It's been so many years now. There's a couple of people from Prop 8 here today. So, uh, but it was the same sex, uh, the fight for same-sex marriage in California, for those of you that, that are a little younger. Um, and I worked, <laughs> I worked on the camp. I know. It's like it happens to all of us. We all get older. Um, and I actually managed the data for the whole campaign. And I was a little younger then, and it really bothered me how little the lesbian voice, the queer women voice, um, was out there in the movement. And I managed all the data, and so I really saw how much people were giving. And so I did a little study, not statistically sound, but when I looked at the information, it showed that gay men were giving about six times more than gay women for a lot less of the effort, so less phone calls, less emails, less meetings, less whatever. Um, and it really struck me. And it was one of these intense lessons where I learned that there are really only two ways that you can show up in this world. And it's with your time, and it's with your money. But your money is a lot more scalable. And I, and I really want the women in this room to hear that, because there's no amount of time that we can replace with economic power. It's so important. And when I looked around the movement, I just really, I really missed and I honestly needed. I didn't have many role models besides Kate Kendall, who's amazing, you'll hear from soon. But um, I really missed that voice. And so I made a decision right then that I wanted to be a lesbian who 
had a voice, who had a seat at a table, who wasn't afraid to use my economic power to create the world that I want to live in, that I wouldn't be afraid to do that, to use my time, but also my money. But I want to be clear about the world that I want to live in, and I think it's the world that we all here want to live in. I want to live in a world where <laughs> women make more money than men. I want to live in a world where 10-page papers arguing the gender gap exists because women are more neurotic and have a lower stress tolerance than men do not exist. I want to live in a world where no one can lose their job because of their sexual, sexual or gender identity. I want to live in a world where our dreamers do not live in fear. I want to live in a world where our president respects our transgender brothers and sisters who serve in the military. Where our Congress actually reflects the people that live in this country. And most importantly, I want to live in a world where there's a black lesbian president. She'll be here later today, so maybe plant the seed. We have an idea for you. We all decided. <laughs> um, but I have hope because of what we've been able to build at Lesbian 2 Tech. Look around you. We've been able to create a world, a community of 25,000 queer women and the people who love us. Hi, Allies, we love you. Um, we've had events in 37 cities all over the country, all over the world. We have hula hoop contests, that's coming later, so get ready. We have some hoops if you want to practice. But we also have speakers who are curing cancer, building rocket ships, serving in you know, the highest ranks of our government. Our speakers are 50% women of color. <laughs> 20% black and Latinx. 10% transgender, gender not conforming. We've literally built the most diverse community in the world. And I know if we can do it, lesbians, if lesbians can do it, then tech, we gotta make this happen. We gotta make this happen. And you know what, world, we gotta make this happen. So we've also had summits all over the world. We're actually having one in November in London. We launched a coding scholarship program for Edie Windsor. In the Edie Windsor Coding Scholarship Program. We've actually given or helped raise over $120,000 for other groups that we love and that we care about. This year we helped produce uh, the first ever uh, tech summit for the transgender community. We used to put on a White House LGBTQ tech and innovation summit, um, but we still had a summit this year at Google, so we, we kept the tradition alive, which it's really important to do, obviously. Uh, I promise this is about to happen. I know I've been saying this for a while for the people that have been coming, but we are so close to launching Bring a Lesbian to Work Day. We're so, so, so close. So close. Um, and we're going to start a new leadership program called Fellows and Leaders soon, I promise, end of the year. And we're also this year, um, we've been hearing from a lot of our mid-level and senior executive talent uh, that they would like a uh, summit for them. So we're actually going to experiment with this. How many of you know who Ida B. Wells is? So African-American, one of the leading innovators in our country, data scientists, used data to track the lynchings that were happening all over the country and ultimately was the beginning of the end of, of lynching in our country. So it's a, it's a history we want to share with the people who don't know it. And if you have your phone, make sure to Wikipedia here if you haven't heard of her yet. And you guys, can you believe it? We're about to have our fifth anniversary San Francisco summit in March. <laughs> This year, we expect, between all of the days, over 5,000 queer women and the people who love us. Get ready, team. That's, that's for my staff. Um, and, you know, what we've been able to do is not only make our visibility 
to the rest of the world, which we've done. We were just in Vogue um, a couple weeks ago, which is a huge deal to have a whole cover based on like, not a cover, but a whole spread of, I mean, we'll get a cover soon. When Lydia's, when Lydia, when Lydia's president, we will have that cover for lesbians. Um, but to have this, the visibility for the outside world is obviously important, but I want to talk about the visibility in our own community, right? I mean, when I first started Lesbian 2 Tech, I'd ask people, who's one speaker that you'd want to hear if we did a summit? And honestly, 95% of people had not one person that they could name that they'd want to hear. Now we've had over 500 queer women speak. We're in vogue. We have role models for days. And if you don't have one, go on our websites and look at the speakers and they're all there. Or just turn to the person next to you and you will find someone who is ready to be your, your mentor or your peer mentor or your friend or your best friend or your girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> we, we are your people. We are the face of technology. We've been able to do this together. So thank you. And <laughs> uh, Obama actually wrote his letter a couple years ago. And with the state of the world, I just, I just feel like it's so important to read every year and kind of start us off right. So this is something he wrote back in 2016. Um, but it's still relevant today. You guys want me to read it? Yeah. <clears throat> I send greetings to all those attending the Lesbian to Tech Summit. We live in an extraordinary time in human history. Technology is constantly evolving, fueling our economy and improving the lives of people across the planet. What were once mere ideas in the minds of the optimistic are now realities we see every day. We have platforms for individual expression that help us recognize our common humanity. And our, we power our lives with hardware that continues to shrink, making our world smaller and closer than ever before. As barriers to quality and opportunity break down, we look to trailblazing innovators like you to seek new frontiers and guide us toward a future of greater inclusivity and understanding. I wish you all the best as you gather to celebrate innovators and harness your creative potential. Barack Obama. We miss you a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>